Hey guys, hope everybody had a great Easter. Um, it's been a great week here in Northern Ireland. Um, we've been enjoying some really fantastic weather. Um, today is really spectacular. We've got beautiful blue skies and the sun's really warm. So I think springtime has finally landed here. So it's beautiful. So today I'm at Ballantoy in County Antrim, which is one of my favorite places in Northern Ireland. It's a wonderful spot. We've got on one side you've got beautiful lush green countryside and we've got the sea um, with lots of I guess it's limestone sea stacks which jut out of the water and make a very dramatic background seascape so it's very beautiful we're here actually just to the left of me I don't know if you can see it is a, a famous rock called Elephant Rock and this is actually the first time I've been in this part of Ballantoy and I must say it's very beautiful, very secluded and it's only a matter of like 10 minutes walk away from the harbour so the next time you're at Port Ballantoy Harbour uh, make sure you come along and check out Elephant Rock here uh, it's very tranquil, I've only met a couple of passers by so it's got a really nice, nice ambient vibe to the whole place so I'm just hanging around for a bit the sky is really clear, so there is no clouds at all, which makes a change for this place. Um, so, not really ideal conditions for landscape photography. It's always nice to have some clouds to get a nice dramatic cloud definition going on. But today, we are clear blue skies for once. It's almost like California. It's so beautiful and clear. But we do need some clouds. We really need some clouds. So we'll probably get about another 30 minutes or so until sunset and we will see how that goes so we'll check you later Hey guys, well here we are back in Lightroom. Um, before we get started, I should say that I was shooting with a 24 to 105 mil lens at f4, and I was shooting at ISO 50, 24 mil f16 with a two second exposure, and I was also using the ND filter as well. Now the reason why I was using the ND filter was because I was shooting directly in the sunlight, even though it was a sunset, it was particularly harsh and it was really really bright. So. It was a good idea to be using the ND filter. Plus with the two second exposure, it also allowed me to capture a little bit of nice soft fluid motion within the water. Um, now it's also really, really good whenever you've got really nice clouds and you've got a bit of soft wind moving, which creates a nice bit of softness within the sky. However, on this occasion, there was no clouds, but hey, what can you do? Still. That's what I used, that was, that was my setup for the shoot. Uh, obviously I was using a tripod as well, which is very, very important. So anyhow, yep, we've got some really nice shots and we will do a quick Lightroom edit and have a look at these now. So as you can see them, which is very dark. Yes, it's certainly nice and moody, but um, there's a lot of detail and stuff going on, which, you know, it's kind of hidden. So I always do shoot with Lightroom processing in mind and certainly this was, was no exception. So with this, what we can do is, first thing we want to do is we're going to raise the exposure. We'll raise it a full stop and we will bring up the shadows just to bring out all that information in the foreground. Now looking at the histogram here, histogram doesn't look too bad. It looks, it looks kind of dark, so what I want to do is I'm actually going to bring out the blacks 
Now, I do like my photographs to be nice and crispy and crunchy and contrasty. But once I start adding clarity, it'll bring out all the nice blacks and the whites and, and make all the tones pop. And I really do like my clarity, certainly with my landscapes. So we're going to bring the clarity slider right up. We're going to go for 100% on the clarity slider. And we're going to add some vibrance. Even though it's a sunset, the colours aren't that strong in my opinion. I don't want it oversaturated, but I do want nice vibrant colour going on. Now saturation is one thing that I very, very rarely touch. And if I do touch saturation, for the most part, it's whenever I'm actually bringing colours out of the image rather than adding more colour into it. Saturation is, you know, it can be tricky and adding too much saturation can certainly make your, your images look very muddy. So we're going to leave saturation for now. Um, HSL tool we'll leave for now and sharpening. I'll add my standard 70 or so percent, which I'm quite happy with. About there looks good. And finger on the Alt key and we'll get the mask up and we will mask out. some of that image so that the sharpening doesn't affect it. Now as you can see in the sky, those are not stars, they are dirt and dust particles either on my sensor <laughs> or on my lens. And you can see there's quite a lot. So it's always a good idea to get your sensor cleaned once every six months or so. Um, you know, you're always going to need to change your lenses on location, be it at a beach, be it in a park, or be it at a wedding. Um, so best advice is, is to always have the lens upside down. Hold your camera upside down until you need to connect the two. And make sure there's no dust or wind or sand blowing around. However, it's inevitable that sooner or later you're going to get dust and dirt particles in and around your sensor or on your camera lens. So it's always a good idea to keep them clean, clean them once every six months. No doubt I need to clean mine very, very shortly. Now within Lightroom, it's very, very useful because we can actually get rid of those um, spots. And what we do is we go into the spot removal tool and we click on visualize spots, which brings up a mask and then we'll move the slider just a little bit. And we can see where those spots are here in the sky. Um, we're just gonna quickly zoom in And we're going to select a couple of those spots just to show you how easy it is to get rid of them. So finger, well, I was going to say finger in the alt key, but it's not. You just simply click on the spot and it selects a part of the image close by just to, to clone over it. And it does it very well. Just click, click on some of these spots to get rid of them. I'm not going to do them all, but just to give you an idea. And then we can click off Visualize Spots. And we'll zoom back out. And we'll click Close. There's a big, big one up there, which we'll get rid of. Okay, zoom out, right, so I'll spend a few minutes later on and just take out the rest of the spots. So what else do I have? Enable profile corrections, which gets rid of the, the lens vignette and also pulls the image out like so. Now I did notice whenever I zoomed in here under these rocks, what you've got, you've got a bit of uh, chromatic aberration, which are the reds and the greens 
just appearing around the edges of these rocks. So if you click on remove chromatic aberration, you should get rid of them or at least minimize it. Like so. Zoom out. Okay, that's looking fine so far. We're not going to use a vignette. We might bring up the blue primary saturation in the camera calibration just to make it a bit more vibrant. Right there looks fine. What else can we do? We can bring down the highlights just to make that sunlight become a bit more detailed without it getting too saturated. Somewhere about there. Somewhere about there looks good to me. Okay. What else can we do? Shadow is 100%. Highlights are down. Blacks. See how strong the blacks came back after adjusting the clarity slider. Okay, I'm happy with that. Pretty happy with that. Now, there's one thing whenever you're using um, an ND filter is your white balance just goes out the window. It's just trashed. So it's always good to experiment and try and bring back some sort of natural white balance. Now, with your white balance dropper, in this circumstance, what you want to do is you want to find a neutral sort of part of the image, a white part or a gray part. Now, my eyes are drawn to this spot here. Oh, let me see if I can, oh, we'll get rid of that for now. Now, I don't know what this is. It could be, it could be bird poop for all I know. But we're gonna use that to set or at least get somewhere towards getting our white balance. So we're gonna select that with the eyedropper tool and we'll zoom back out. So it looks a little bit more natural. It's okay. It's okay, I'm happy with that. So what else can we do? Let me think. Clarity, vibrance, greens, sharpening, noise reduction. Now because I brought up the exposure and the shadows 100%, a lot of noise has been brought into to the image. And you know, there's nothing wrong with noise and grain sometimes can actually add the overall effect of the image. However, this in this instance, I want to get rid of as much of that noise as possible. So let's zoom into the background. And we will bring up the noise reduction slider to about 30 or so. And maybe even add some of the color noise reduction as well. Now, we don't want to bring it up too high because obviously what eventually happens is you start losing important information in the image, which we don't want to do. So I want to just keep it nicely balanced. Now that's not too bad. Let's see the before and after. So before sharpening and noise reduction. Yep, you can see it looks quite nasty. Lots of color noise and stuff going on. And with the noise reduction and sharpening on, okay, it's thinking about it. There you go. So you can see vast, vast, vast improvement. And that certainly becomes a lot more noticeable whenever you get your image printed out as well. So Yep, I, I'm pretty happy with that. There's nothing more I think I want to do with that image. Except I want to create a preset for that. So within my presets bar, I, I have 
loads and loads of presets, but the one I use the most is something called temporary settings, and that's what I use constantly, and I toggle between and always change and always updating it. So I always have a couple of temporary settings which are used all the time. So we're going to update this with all the settings that we have, everything selected, update. And then we're going to select this image here. And we're going to apply all of those settings to that image. As it thinks about it. There you go. Okay. Now what I want to do is I'm going to export these. I'll export them at a, at, a, at a good size, probably 24 inches in length, 300 DPI. I'll export them, put them in the Photoshop, and use Photo Merge to combine the two images to create more of a sort of panorama of them both, because I do like the rock structures on the left, as well as the main rock structure in the middle, which is elephant rock, as well as the rock structures on the right. Is that the right term, rock structures? Probably not. So we're going to combine both of these images and I put it as the one image and get it printed. So there you go, guys. Um, you can quickly see the before and after. So before and after. Backslash key. And there you have it. Okay, guys. So thanks for watching. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Don't forget to subscribe wherever the subscribe button should be. And I will catch you next time.